Coming up on this episode of Freedom From Fire, we'll learn about a poignant presentation honoring firefighters and police officers here in our city. And later, we'll hear how a home sprinkler system not only can save your life, but could also save you money. We have a lot to talk about in this episode, so stay tuned to Freedom From Fire. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Freedom From Fire. I'm your host, Deputy Fire Commissioner of Logistics, Chief Tony Snyder. Here at Freedom From Fire, we aim to improve your quality of living by giving you fire and life safety information. We also introduce you to our local safety partners. We have some great guests with us today. In the first half of our show, we're going to hear about the Living Flame Memorial which is an event that honors our fallen first responders. In the second half of the show, I'll talk to a member of our fire code unit who will teach us how valuable sprinkler systems are to our homes. Let's get started. Each year, the Philadelphia Fire Department, was I done? Joins forces with the police department for a combined memorial service to remember the firefighters and police officers who have given their lives in service to the city. We gather to pay homage to our fallen comrades who made the ultimate sacrifice while serving the citizens of Philadelphia. This is a day when we take time to reflect and recognize our fallen brothers and sisters who unselfishly made our community safer. Their sacrifice remains an inspiration to those of us who continue in public service. Here today to talk about the Living Flame Memorial is Deputy Commissioner Dennis Wilson from the Philadelphia Police Department's Special Operations Unit and Lieutenant Bernie Gilliam from the Philadelphia Fire Department. Deputy Commissioner Wilson, welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure for you to be here with us. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your experience with the police department and your career? So I started off, I actually wanted to be a firefighter. My dad was a fireman and uh, took both the police and fire tests police department called me first. I actually was hired as a dispatcher for one year while I was waiting to go in the academy. So I joined the academy. I've had 13 assignments since I started in 1988, most in patrol, but I'm now, I was appointed to deputy commissioner last March and now in charge of special operations. In our department, special operations consist of our narcotics unit, homeland security and investigations. Wow, your plate's full, I'm sure. It's, it's a busy job, yes. Lieutenant Gilliam, welcome also. Thank you. And why don't you tell us a little bit about your career with the Philadelphia Fire Department? Well, my career with the Philadelphia Fire Department has been very, very rewarding, I must say. It's been an eye-opener for me from the first day. Um, as a matter of fact, I can tell you that come Sunday, I will celebrate 33 years of being a member of the Philadelphia Fire Department. I started in the fire department at Engine 40, which is at uh, uh, Willard Avenue, 65th and Willard Avenue. And from there, I went to a very, very hot and busy uh, engine company, Engine 5. And from Engine 5, I went to Ladder 6. From Ladder 6, I found a new facet, a new ability, a new job within the fire department in the fire prevention division. And the fire, De fire Prevention Division, it really enlightened me to how broad the spectrum of the Philadelphia Fire Department can be. Uh, the Fire Prevention uh, Division allowed me to interact with civilians in a more uh, safe, I should say, environment where we were able to train uh, civilians and citizens how to be safe in a, in a fire-induced situation. And I found that to be very rewarding where it was not only me showing up in running gear, trying to put a fire out for a sorry situation, 
but it was me helping people prevent that fire beforehand. And I thought that was an excellent way to spend the latter part of my career. Wonderful. Thank you. So uh, understanding that this process for this memorial, Living Flame Memorial Service is uh, involved with both police and, and uh, fire departments, uh, how long, and, and working together, how long would you say the police department works in this process along with the fire department? So the actual planning is done by the city representative's office. They put a lot of work into this, and it's, it's pretty much the same every year. So we have our, our color guard, our traffic unit. They all know their jobs already, so we don't have to put a whole lot of planning. It, that's done right. by another unit. Great. Lieutenant Gilliam, kind of mm -hmm. the same question. You know, when, when we work at these things, although we work together in our partner agencies, how about the fire department and their preparation for this as well? Yeah, the, fire, <clears throat> the fire department does, um, we give it a lot of preparation. We give it a lot of forethought um, in the celebration because it's, it's such a, a bringing together of so many uh, entities within the city. Um, it brings together uh, the families of, of the fallen. It brings together uh, civilians who uh, may not know the names, but they know of the incidents. And it, it allows uh, city officials to show and give uh, homage and dignitary, and digni it gives dignitaries the opportunity to give dignity to the men and women who may have perished in the line of duty. So it's, it's a cathartic situation for a lot of people. So the fire department does uh, really tend to go all out so to speak, for that situation, for that event. Okay. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Wilson, in your words, what, what makes this event so special? Uh, it's really all about the families. It's, we honor the, the fallen hero, but also the hero's families. And we have families that come back year after year. That really makes it special. It's really unique because it's the only event like this that's a combined memorial, police and fire, in a large city in the United States. Right, and it truly is a, a wonderful event. It's very, very beautiful, and I know that it's uh, represented by, like you said, from folks that come back year after year honoring their loved ones, but appreciating what, what we all do for them and what the city does for them. Um, so, Lieutenant Gilliam, question mm -hmm. for you would be, yes. who can attend this memorial service? Well, that's, <clears throat> that's one of the wonderful things about this uh, event, if we can say. As I said before, it's open to the entire public. It gives everyone in the city the opportunity to show their respect. It gives families a chance to commiserate and communicate with other families who may be going through the same thing. A fallen hero is, is a tragic situation to have in any particular family, but here's an opportunity that they can, as I said before, commiserate with other families who are going through the same thing. Uh, civilians, citizens from the city of Philadelphia can show their honor, show their respect to these families and to these fallen heroes. Uh, so it's a great, it's a, it's a sad event, but it's a wonderful opportunity for people to come together and try to heal. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I have another question. Uh, I'm going to ask you both, Commissioner Wilson, you first. Uh, what do you think some of the key highlights will be for those that may be coming for the first time? What do you think they'll see that really makes an impact with them? Well, it's a, a one-hour event, but there's a lot to it. They, you, they're going to see city dignitaries, the police commissioner, the fire commissioner, on a stage. The mayor gives a speech. Both commissioners give a speech. The three dignitaries then walk a wreath and place it in front of the memorial. Families of the fallen are given the opportunity to place a flower in front of the memorial, as, as uh, well as the police and fire departments walk up. There's a procession, and everyone has a flower that they can lay on the wreath the, uh, in front of the memorial. We have a rifle salute. We have our color guard present. In addition to the one-hour event, we start, we have a breakfast for the family, the families um, immediately before and then following this we have a survivor's luncheon. There's a lot to it, there, there's a lot in that one hour memorial as well. Right, oh, I'm sure and, I, and again I know that the returning families and those that may be new this year or coming for the first time 
will hopefully understand the significance uh, and what is supposed to show our honor and our appreciation for what they've done, not only from each of our respective organizations, but from the community as a whole. So, uh, Lieutenant Gilliam, can you expound on anything that Commissioner Wilson had said? Is there anything else? Uh, who yes, else might be attending? Uh, I, I appreciate your comments. Um, the pageantry of that ceremony shows that we do not forget, we do not forget these fallen heroes. We do not forget these people who sacrifice so much and the families of the individuals who sacrifice so much because we can't forget that these individuals weren't born in a vacuum. They come from families and the impact of losing this loved one is, is great on that family. And to let that family know that we hold them in our arms, that we, the city of Philadelphia, salute that family for the sacrifice that they've given. That pageantry alone um, for a person, for a first time visitor is, uh, is an interesting sight. It's a fantastic sight to see that at no point do we ever forget about the sacrifice that these individuals made. And as you pointed out, um, civilians coming for the first time, everybody can play a part in this uh, program. Everybody can play a part. You can walk by, you can view the names, you can view the years that we've lost uh, these particular individuals. And you can place a flower, you can shake a hand, you can greet a family who has just lost one of their precious family members. So. There's a lot to be said for uh, this celebration. It's a coming together, as I said before, of police and fire. And, and, and it's a rarity that most cities don't appreciate or most cities don't do. But it is done here in the city of Philadelphia. And I know that uh, in, in Philadelphia, both of our respective organizations uh, take pride in knowing that it is probably our number one responsibility other than the specific work that we do, is not only remembering, but taking care of those families. Uh, lastly, what I'd really like to discuss and make sure we get this information out, when is the memorial? What time does it start? Oh, are the pipe and drums gonna be there? Absolutely, which is another combined unit between the police and fire department. The pipes and drums, Scottish, um, American music um, and it's very interesting to hear the bagpipes and the drums it's a very very interesting sound um, and as I said before the ceremony is very very prestigious um, only the best we bring out the best and the brightest that we have in the city of Philadelphia to perform this yes we will have the pipes and drums as a matter of fact I'd like to see all the citizens of Philadelphia come May 2nd and get there early so that you can see the formation of things. 11 o'clock is fine. 12 o'clock, I believe, the program actually starts. So come down, Philadelphia, and see this program. And see and be able to honor these families who gave up so much. Commissioner Wilson, do you have any final words? Just to piggyback on what you guys both said, it's something that's done very well in Philadelphia. We take care of our fallen, the families of the fallen. It's very important to the fire department, the police department. It's not that way everywhere. It's done very well here. I, I can absolutely attest to that in so many situations where we work together uh, under circumstances that a lot of folks may not necessarily understand. Uh, and I will tell you from the fire department's perspective, it is much, much appreciated the way we do that together, the professionalism, the respect that's distributed through each of our organization, uh, organizations. It's, it's truly something to behold. Uh, so again, I appreciate it. So we're looking at May 2nd at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. And we are at what is the location? We are at the key, which is at it, it's 600 Arch. Mm -hmm. The lieutenant wants everyone there at 11, but it actually starts at noon. Yes. But it is good okay. to get there exactly. early. Absolutely. It's Franklin Square, 6th and Arch. Franklin Square. So for a wonderful opportunity to see both organizations show honor and respect, please show up May 2nd before noon. It starts at noon. So now we're going to take a short break. But when we come back, we'll hear from our fire code department about why those little metal sprinklers you see in the ceiling make a huge difference. So stay with us.
Welcome back to Freedom From Fire. I'm your host, Deputy Fire Commissioner of Logistics, Chief Tony Snyder. Do you have a sprinkler system installed in your home? If not, these statistics may make you consider looking into the idea. According to a report from the National Fire Protection Association, the fire death rate for civilians with sprinkler systems in their home is 81% lower than homes without sprinklers. Not only do sprinklers protect homeowners, but they also help prevent injury to firefighters. The average injury rate for firefighters drops 80% when sprinklers are present in a fire. It was found that sprinklers keep fires to the room of origin 97% of the time. When sprinklers and hardwired smoke alarms are present, the home fire death rate drops 90%. Although it's important to have some sort of smoke alarm, it was found that when battery-powered smoke alarms are used on their own without an automatic extinguishing system, the death rate is only 18% lower than homes without. Those are some staggering statistics in favor of fire sprinkler systems. Not only do they reduce the risk of injury and death, they also help lower insurance premiums and property loss. Despite all these benefits, many homes don't have the type of automatic sprinkler systems that you see in hotels and businesses. Our next guest I'd like to introduce is a member of the Philadelphia Fire Department's Fire Code Unit. This unit is responsible for processing submissions from builders and owners where the code requires fire department approval and coordination. The unit works with City License and Inspections Department. Please welcome Deputy Chief Charles LaPree. Chief, Thanks. welcome aboard. Thank you, glad to be here. Great, I have some great questions for you. I hope you're prepared. So in your words, why don't you give us essentially what the fire code unit is? Well, the fire code unit are rules and regulations governing the safety through the city of Philadelphia as mandated by the Home Rule Charter. The fire code is the minimum standards requirements for buildings uh, that already exist. Great, great. And I understand it's a very intricate system that we have in, in Philadelphia and the rules that we have. Yes, we, we partner with the Department of License and Inspections and uh, they, in combination with us, assist in writing the fire codes, the building codes, and the changes in the international building codes. Right. Great. Thank you. So next question I'd like to ask you, are private residences required to have sprinkler systems? And I know that there's a lot that leaves out that open-ended. Let's talk about newly constructed private residences first. Newly constructed private residences, uh, row homes that are being built now are required to have sprinkler systems installed in all the properties. The newly standalone properties, single houses, are not required to have uh, sprinkler systems as the side-by-side uh, -side homes are not required to have sprinkler systems in them. Wonderful. And I understand that a number of years ago, as the fire service started to identify this as an issue, that there had been some concern over what, what some people felt was an exorbitant cost to adding sprinklers into newly constructed buildings. Can you expound on that at all? Yes. Uh, the cost of uh, placing a sprinkler system in your, in your home, uh, we refer to as retrofitting the sprinkler system. Um, this or this stops small fires from becoming big fires. And there's a multitude of uh, good things to come from that. It stops the fire from progressing through or within your building. It stops the amount of damage that's in your building. It allows the building to be uh, renovated over again without spending a whole lot of money and gets the homeowner back into the building a lot sooner than if there was no sprinkler system. A lot of times uh, fires are so ravishing that the buildings become vacant and then open to trespass and we have a lot of problems with that. Can you think of any other benefits that homeowners might experience from having a sprinkler system or having one installed subsequent to the building already being built? Uh, yes. It, when we have a fire, it not only impacts on the lives of all the people that are in that building, but it impacts on the environment also. Uh, by 
extinguishing the fire quickly. And again, sprinkler systems are designed to put little fires out before they become big fires. So we have a, uh, an added uh, uh, institution there in that we do not uh, have to impact on the environment. Uh, it's a cleaner air situation and uh, we can get people back in, into their homes uh, a lot quicker. And Chief, what about the possible positive impact uh, when sprinklers are involved and someone has a small fire that it may provide a little more protection, let's say, in some of those areas you spoke about, to their neighbors? It, it also uh, impacts on the neighbors, of course. Uh, if the fire is confined to the area of origin where it first started, then the firefighters can come in, put that fire out, and contain it to that particular property. The people on either side uh, will receive maybe some damage, maybe smoke uh, infiltration into their home, but usually the fire will not spread to their home. And so the neighbors uh, have a good uh, opportunity of staying in their homes, having it cleaned up, and uh, continue their normal lifespan. So, and, and if you, earlier I, I kind of quoted some statistics on the safety aspects, both for homeowners or residents in a home, as well as firefighting. Can you expound on that at all? Well, yes. Well, we know that uh, sprinkler systems increase the survivability of people within those structures. Uh, the statistics indicate, as you had said, Commissioner, that they are 97% effective. So the fire that starts in one area with a sprinkler system will be confined to that area. Uh, homeowners, if they have sprinkler systems, will lessen the damage to their home and be able to continue normal life in a shorter period of time. Thank you. So I, I, one of the other areas that I'd like to touch on briefly as it relates to kind of the sprinkler systems and why we feel they're so important, particularly in today's construction techniques. Can you talk about some of those techniques with maybe some of the engineering wood concepts of what's being done today as compared to what was done 50 years ago or whatnot, how that really, the sprinkler systems really provide so much more protection? Uh, construction today, uh, as it was uh, 50 years ago, is totally, totally different. Years ago, we had bricks and concrete and uh, plaster walls. Today, we have uh, structural wood uh, most of the uh, construction in these houses have different furniture than we had 50 years ago. Uh, the furniture uh, burns hotter and faster. It uh, doesn't give the firefighters a chance to get in and, and put that fire out. Uh, with the sprinkler system, no matter what type of furniture you would have inside those structures, uh, the sprinkler system would hold that fire in check. It would not spread to the wooden uh, joists and uh, uprights that you would have inside the building. The sprinkler system uh, would actually allow the firefighters to get into the building and uh, do what they have to do. <clears throat> Chief, thank you so much. Obviously, there's some great consideration here and concerns of what we're doing to protect our citizens. With all the advantages we discussed about sprinklers, I hope you will consider installing a home sprinkler system where you live. Think about how it will improve and protect your safety, your community, and your property. Also, I encourage you to attend the Living Flame Memorial if you have the opportunity. That's all we have time for for today. Remember, if you would like to find out more about LaSalle TV, you can check out our social media sites. And if you're interested in learning about the Philadelphia Fire Department, visit our Facebook, Twitter, and web pages. I would like to once again thank our guests for joining us today. And I also would like to thank you for tuning in and watching. So until next time, remember, fire is everyone's fight. Stay safe and remain free from fire.